I'd like to just briefly discuss two things that most people are not aware of, but that very dramatically impact your mental health, physical health, and performance. And that's the fact that certain hormones and neurotransmitters are non-negotiable in the sense that they are going to be released every 24 hours. For instance, the hormone, which is commonly thought of as a stress hormone, but it does much more than that, which is cortisol, is going to be released every 24 hours. You cannot suppress cortisol, nor would you want to, to the point where there is no cortisol release. What you want is that cortisol release to occur in the early part of your day, regardless of when you wake up. There are certain ways to enforce that, and the main one, the most powerful one being viewing morning sunlight uh, within an hour or so after waking up, although if you wake up and the sun isn't out for several hours because you wake up very early or it's a certain time of year where you live, then get sunlight in your eyes as early in the day as is possible for you. And before that, if you want to be awake and you want to further increase cortisol release, turn on as many bright lights in your environment as possible. And that's, of course, if you want to be awake. If you do not get bright light in your eyes in the early part of the day for more than a couple of days, what ends up happening is that cortisol release, as I mentioned, is non-negotiable and it starts to drift out further and further into your day. Again, regardless of when you wake up. This has been shown to be correlated with increases in depression, anxiety, difficulty sleeping, etc. So there are a lot of reasons to get bright light in your eyes, ideally from sunlight early in the day, but restricting that cortisol peak to the early part of your day is among the most important of those effects and reasons. Okay, the other thing that's non-negotiable is that you are going to release neuromodulators like dopamine and serotonin and things of that sort. Many of you have probably heard of neuromodulators. They do exactly as the name suggests. They modulate the activity of multiple other circuits. So dopamine does many things in the brain and body as does serotonin, but one of the more powerful effects of dopamine that most people are aware of is that is associated with motivation, focus, and drive. And again, dopamine is going to be released every 24 hours, but you can enforce when it's released by the different activities that you do. Morning sunlight will increase dopamine release in the early part of the day, and it's a very long lasting one. Getting deliberate cold exposure through a cold shower or cold immersion up to the neck, and people always say, how cold? Well, cold enough that it's uncomfortable, sort of shocks your system a bit, but not so cold that it's unsafe, okay? So for some people that's 60 degrees Fahrenheit, for other people it's 40 degrees. Ease into it slowly. A lot of people say, well, there's not so much evidence that the ice can improve your metabolism, etc." Mm, we could argue about that or we could not argue about it, but what's certainly not disputed is that there are massive increases in dopamine and norepinephrine release and epinephrine release, the so-called catecholamines, dopamine, norepinephrine, and norepinephrine are the catecholamines and those act as sort of cousin molecules to elevate focus, mood, and alertness. And along with morning sunlight or bright light from other sources, if you can't get morning sunlight, will further increase mood alertness, immune system function, and many, many other positive things throughout the day. Again, if you don't do these practices, that's okay, of course, in the sense that your system will still release these chemicals, but it will tend to release them at various times throughout the day, triggered by events in your outside environment, rather than you having control over them. And that can be problematic. You do not want a lot of catecholamine release late in the evening, unless you're heading out partying or something like that. You simply don't want an 8 p.m. blast in cortisol or an 8 p.m. blast in dopamine. That is not good unless you have some reason that you need to be out all night, okay? So many people suffer from anxiety, poor immune system function, reduced mood, et cetera, and they think, oh, I'm deficient in dopamine or that my immune system doesn't work. Look, there could be larger issues at hand and you should talk to your physician about that, but if you're not already restricting your cortisol and dopamine and norepinephrine and epinephrine release to the early part and middle part of your day, well, then it's no wonder that you're not sleeping well at night, right? And we don't wanna blame ourselves here. What I'm trying to do is, uh, arm you with tools that are behavioral based. So they have zero cost. They take a little bit of time. So the real trifecta is to get bright sunlight in your eyes or other light. If you can't get bright sunlight in your eyes early in the day, remember to blink. You never want to stare at any light so bright that it's painful to look at. You don't want to damage your eyes. Cold, deliberate cold exposure from uncomfortably cold, but safe temperatures of cold water from a cold shower for one to three minutes or from an ice bath or circulating cold water or ocean or lake if you can get safely in that. And then movement and exercise will increase the release of dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine, the so-called catecholamines. So again, the point here is not to regurgitate uh, practices that I've talked about before, but rather to emphasize that the release of these chemicals is inevitable and you want to try and restrict them 
to a certain part of the day. It's sort of like organizing things uh, on a shelf in the proper order is going to be very powerful in certain instances rather than just having everything splayed out across the 24-hour cycle. Think of whatever analogy you want. I'm certain there are better ones than the one I just used. But nevertheless, you have control over these molecules. And so a lot of people think, oh, I don't have dopamine or I'm low in dopamine. It may just be that your dopamine release distribution is, is all screwed up as opposed to you being deficient in dopamine or cortisol somehow. Okay, there's a lot that could be said about this. I'll probably do an entire episode of the Huberman Lab podcast about hormone and neuromodulator and neurotransmitter release across time and how to control it across time. But these are sort of the general themes and that's what I wanted to raise today as well as offering you some practices. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. I do try and read through those, if not immediately across the week um, and govern the types of uh, content that I put here and on the podcast accordingly. Please also, if you're interested in these items, you can uh, check out the podcast. It's released every Monday. Sometimes we have special episodes also released on Wednesday, like AMAs. But every Monday is the Huberman Lab podcast. We have a podcast coming out this Monday all about a rational guide to supplementation, which is not really focused on any specific supplements, but rather how to think about supplementation in a rational and coherent way, depending on what you're doing with your nutrition and your other demands of life. You can find everything at hubermanlab.com, linked to all formats, Spotify, Apple, YouTube, etc. Again, put any questions you have in the comments section below this post. And as always, thank you for your interest in science.